Isn't that an amazing sentiment? I don't consider myself a musician. I consider myself first and foremost a human being because it breaks down the walls of that box. Hi, welcome to today's vlog. Yesterday marked two years since I did this. So I've watched a little bit over the last few weeks some people doing vlogs and I kind of thought I'll give it a shot. Now I started vlogging for two reasons. One was to let my backers who had backed my Jazz Vespers project know what I was up to in basically spending their money on the run-up to producing the album. I also thought it would help me uh, document what was going on in my thought processes and everything else as I reached you know, the kind of climax point of putting this Jazz Vespers album together. Which for me, as I said in the EPK for the album, was kind of like um, accumulation of everything I'd done in my life up to that point, whether it was music, digital media, uh, tech, um, theology, everything else like that all came together uh, within this album. So that I thought it would be a great way of documenting how it went along. Just thought I shouldn't really, um, be right. Hey, Tom. Hi, I'm Tom. Hi, Dan, how are you doing? I am absolutely shattered. Now yesterday I spent a little bit of time watching some of those early episodes of the vlog and for me they're quite painful. Uh, they're drawn out, I don't quite get to the point fast enough. But as I said in yesterday's, well the t two days ago's vlog, the reason I got into vlogging is that I hate blogging. Well I don't hate it, I just don't feel I'm very very good at it. Now one of the things I've tried to do in vlogs since, and hopefully you'll find it in today's vlog, is to tell you a story or to explain something to you or to give you a review or a quick lesson or something like that some tidbit of information that hopefully when you go away from watching my vlog you think oh do you know what I didn't know that before or that was really useful Dan or hmm that's prompted some thought within me or I want to go and practice or uh, all sorts of different things that I hope uh, I can in inspire a response within you. Those early videos did some of it, but you know, I was watching, I've got to admit, oh, Ziki, come on now, get to the point, this could have been half the length. One of the reasons I've got better is that I've done so many. I mean, we're at vlog 354 today, so over two years, that's nearly one every two days, every two and a half days I've done a vlog, which has really inspired me, because right back in the early video, I said this. I have to warn you, I started this thing where it's kind of life in seconds, where you're supposed to record a video every, so two seconds of video every day. Um, I started it a couple of years ago, got as far as about March this year I got, February. So to have kept it going for two years is primarily down to you guys, primarily down to the encouragement I receive, the emails I get, the comments I get, the positive ones at least, um, the, the ideas on Twitter, and with that in mind, I asked on Twitter, and I asked in the last vlog, what your top three vlog episodes were. And these were the results. Number three came in my trip to Dinant in Belgium. So here we are in Dinant, Belgium, home of Adolf Sachs. Now my French isn't great. Number two was my story about a 1975 Selma Mark VI. Ray Wilkes, my old teacher's saxophone. Yesterday I promised to share something really special with you today. This is, or was, Ray Wilkes, my saxophone teacher's last saxophone. And number one was the vlog I made about the soprano sax. But he was involved in a shootout because some guy said he played the wrong chord, so he challenged the guy to a duel saying, Sidney Bechet never plays the wrong chord. Now, a number of you voted for the Santa Play Sax video, which isn't really a vlog. It was actually an advert which has gone viral, which I never intended it to. Uh, but, you know, that was great fun to make. And, you know, check out the how to video. My security camera has not recognised that I'm in the room. Oh, it has. Look, there's me going. Oh, by the way, you can't see on that. I was just shouting at it, showing, saying it was me. Now, I'm really looking forward to the next two years. Who knows where I'll be at in two years' time with my vlogs versus today. Maybe I'll look back on today's vlog and go, oh, I wasn't paced right, should have had this, should have had a drone shot in, should have had... Let's play some drone. Thank you.
Now there's been the occasional vlog that's been a bit controversial. Just to outline to those of you possibly questioning why I don't play Giant Steps, I can play it. This is why I don't play it. And there have been some vlogs that some of you have just not liked. But most of all, I've really enjoyed being on this journey with you. And I hope you'll continue to be on this journey with me and you'll tell your friends about this journey. And don't forget the extra new thing I've got now on my Patreon page. I've literally got a new mix ready to go on the computer. In fact, I'm in this position where I'm like, I've got this really nice piece of mastering software I've got on demo. It's quite expensive. The weather is glorious again outside, uh, and I promised Katie and the kids would have another barbecue today. Oh, before I go, one thing that struck me when I was going through the old vlogs yesterday was how I wasn't really using a fixed set or even making, a lot of these vloggers have, like Casey Neistat has his studio, and I wasn't early on making this room part of the vlog. And one of the things I really like doing when some of you have watched these vlogs and then come for lessons with me or have, have, have Skype lessons with me, and it's kind of there's this, oh, wow, I'm in the room, or I'm having a Skype call in the room. And it's, the room becomes a character within the series, as it were. And I've tried, I need to try and tidy it up a bit more today. I've been saying that since the first vlog as well. Um, but it's really nice to have had this fixed point and this fixed character with the certain set lighting that you guys find familiar and it feels like home for you guys. It's like an anchoring point uh, to the whole vlog series. Uh, I'll try not to change it around like I did one time. Nice car. <sighs> no charcoal at the garage, so I'm going to have to try and think of somewhere else that might have some charcoal. enough almost doesn't make a good enough vlog episode you kind of want me running around trying to find charcoal from various different places anyway always useful to have a few garages around that's the kind of one advantage of living not far from a motorway apart from being able to get in and out of london relatively quickly H four. Oh, press it harder. H. You're not pressing H. Oh, delete last letter. When it's icy. Yeah. It was a bit muddy on the bike ride, but my white shirt got absolutely covered in mud. Uh, I only noticed it when I got home and came to put it out, so anyway, that's off. By the way, did you see, if you're in the UK, the BBC Young Musician of the Year Woodwind Final on Friday evening? 
because this guy won. And if you've ever been to my website, you may recognise him. <laughs> because Rob's one of my former students, he's now at the Royal Academy doing saxophone, so proud of him. I heard Rob speak longer in those interviews on BBC TV than I did in two years of him having lessons with me, but well done Rob, we're all really, really proud of you. The big thing I'll say about Rob, along with some of my other students, Rob, yes, when he first came to me, I remember his dad phoning me and saying, we've heard he's, you know, we've been told he's quite good, and I thought if I had a pound for every parent who thought that about their child, I'd be a very rich man by now, but Rob showed up for his first lesson, and I remember going around the circle of fists with him and throwing scales at him, different exercises and him nailing it, particularly an exercise I call the scale primer on my website where I basically just get people to subdivide their scales at 60 beats per minute. Every exercise I threw at Rob in his first lesson when he was 13, 14, he did it with flying colours. But he always, as a lot of my better students have done those who have really gone on to play themselves, they all have one thing in common. They all do all the boring long tone exercises, scale exercises, arpeggio exercises, transcription exercises. One thing about Rob, that chat with Winton, the picture you saw with him, uh, with Winton, one of the things that was interesting when we had that chat with Winton, and I'll post a link below, you can listen, uh, sorry, not listen to it, you can read it on Cambridge Saxophone, is that Winton said, because I told him about, you know, kind of what I've been told by Bramford about transcribing Leslie Young, Coleman Hawkins, and all those kind of things. And Winton, who is known to most people as quite a conservative uh, jazzer, you know, he's kind of, you'd have thought he would be onto that. He was like, hey, man, get him doing that, but also get him onto Ornette Coleman as well. So one of the last things Rob did with me before he, he left uh, having lessons with me uh, to go on to do his A-levels and stuff was transcribing uh, Lonely Woman by Ornette Coleman. So there you go. Maybe some of it came out in his playing. I don't know. So one thing I did just find on social media was uh, shared by EJ. Strickland on Instagram and it's this video of Herbie Hancock. You know I no longer perceive of myself as fundamentally being a musician. You know I realize now that that view was putting myself in a box and, and now that I, per I perceive myself fundamentally as a human being isn't that an amazing sentiment? I don't consider myself a musician. I consider myself first and foremost a human being because it breaks down the walls of that box. A spot on. Absolutely spot on. But one that I try and match in my own little tiny way. Uh, you can help me do that by supporting Patreon. So please do head over there and support the Patreon page if you can. But even if you can't, thank you all so much for sticking with me through these two years of vlogs. Let's see what the next two years hold. I've got to be honest with you, at times, there have been two or three times where I've thought of stopping the vlog and it took an email or a comment or a tweet or anything like that, which just gave me the encouragement to push on with it. So thank you to all of you who do that. It really does mean a huge amount to me. Please make sure you check out my last vlog here. This is what I was up to this time last year. You probably already do, but hit that subscribe button. We're nearly at six and a half thousand. It would be great to get to 10,000 for the summer. Really would. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.